Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Fantasy News. I am your remarkably clean-cut goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we have quite, you know what, it's just another episode of Fantasy News with awesome fantasy news for us to discuss here. So let's just jump on into it in my best Philly D impression. And the first bit of news we're going to talk about today is the new illustrated edition of Tolkien's Unfinished Tales, originally released in the 1980s, is coming down the road. This will include artwork from the likes of Alan Lee, John Howe, and Ted Nazmith. That article having a calendar on it's misleading. This is not a calendar. It's going to be the unfinished tales of Tolkien put together in a new high quality illustrated edition meant to go alongside your Lord of the Rings, which is very cool. This will have stories like the story of Gondolin, Children of Huron, etc, etc. Basically from all these little things Tolkien had put together. If you're a Tolkien fan, you're already aware of this. And if you're not, this might be a good opportunity to jump on in to his more expanded universe. But before we jump into any more of the fantasy news, have you guys met my brother? This video is brought to you by Skillshare! Skillshare is an online learning community! It offers membership with meaning! Make 2020 oh, a year where you explore oh, God. new oh, skills. It's so aggressive. Oh, this is so unnecessary. I just want to talk about books. Deepen oh. existing passions. It's not about oh. And get lost in creativity. It's so aggressive and not. I don't understand. With Skillshare's online How classes, much they pay you? what you find just might surprise Did Skillshare send you? and inspire you. Skillshare classes are designed for real life so oh. they can fit around your busy schedule. Skillshare offers classes from UX design, best reading practices, or even just forming good life habits. Me personally, I'm really interested in Thomas Frank's real productivity, how to build habits that last. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, with annual subscriptions for as little as $10 a month. The first 500 of Daniel's subscribers to click the link in the description will get two free months of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Now, offer some quality brother time. If you've wondered how we fire Daniels here on the channel, that's how we do it. He forgot to wear the jacket and tie. Oh no. But continuing on with the Lord of the Rings news, we have the star of the upcoming Lord of the Rings TV show at Amazon, not TV show, streaming show 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 over at Amazon has been announced the star announced it's happened Maxim Baldry who you may know from Rome or years and years is officially going to be the face of this Tolkien adaptation not to add to the pressure I'm sure the guy's already feeling but that's a heck of an undertaking and I wish him all the best I know these people are probably putting in a ton of effort to make sure they do Lord of the Rings justice so here's fingers crossed at all lines up and we get a killer addition to the Middle Earth adaptation list. Now, speaking of Amazon adaptations and Wheel of Time news, we also had the composer for the Wheel of Time released. David Buckley will be deciding what tunes flow from your speakers while you watch the Wheel of Time and enter your little eardrums. He has quite an impressive resume. This includes projects like The Good Wife, The Forbidden Kingdom, Papillion, Angel Has Fallen, and The Stranger. If you would like to check out his work, I will have that linked right down below. As well as every other article I talk about here today. So if you'd like to check those out, linked right down there. If you wouldn't mind leaving a like, it would help me a lot. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And in a last second insert, we're going to get a couple of these this video. Tor has just said they will be publishing next Wednesday, March 11th, the Night Sun by Zen E. Rocklin. Now, Epic's adaptation of Stephen King's Jerusalem's Lot has found its cast leads as well. Basically, we're going to get the casting news out of the way. And that's going to be Emily Hampshire and Adrian Brody, both heavyweights to be bringing along with this Stephen King project. So very cool to see for this Stephen King fanboy right here. And this last piece of casting news we're going to touch on is a rumor. I want to make that totally clear. Absolutely, it's a rumor. And that is that Natalie Dormer might be joining Witcher's season two. This is stemming from the fact that she was photographed on a horse near one of the filming locations that was known for Witcher season two, which is currently underway. What do I think about this? I think she's an incredibly talented actress from what we saw in Game of Thrones. She definitely could fit the Witcher vibes. I'm down. Totally okay with that. She's proven herself as a fantasy adaptation uh, killer. So let's go ahead and have her brought along for the Witcher family. But I do feel the need to reiterate, this is still technically a rumor and it could be a giant coincidence that she was on a horse near the Witcher filming location? Yeah, that, that sounds really unlikely. In a last minute fantasy news update, The Last of Us is officially going to be adapted by H.B. Oh, not only that, but it will be produced and written by the creator behind Chernobyl 
and the writer behind the game. Craig Mazin and Neil Druckerman will be working together to helm this project. This, like, guarantees the end of the video game curse, like, of adaptations. I know before there's been like, ah, maybe Detective Pikachu was good enough to qualify. No, this is just awesome. This is guaranteed to be great. If you haven't seen Chernobyl, it's absolutely phenomenal. And this game is one of the best stories ever told in gaming. I'm down 100% so ready and would put stacks in for gambling that this will turn out to be a quality show. HBO! Yeah! Now let's go ahead and talk about trailer news, because we only have two that are worth mentioning here, but I'd like to bring them both to your attention. One, Audible dropped a trailer for its Sandman adaptation. Yes, you're not just getting the adaptation coming to the screen, but Audible is getting its own ready to go as well. So far, all we know is it's coming summer of 2020, but Audible will be adapting the graphic novel Sandman. I'm reading it currently right now, and a lot of my enjoyment comes from the art. Of course, the whole thing is pretty great so far, but the art is mega impressive and one of the selling points of the series, so I'm concerned on how this is going to be adapted. I'm not sure. I'm confused, but I'm looking forward to it. And then we had a trailer drop for season two of Kingdom over at Netflix. And I mainly want to incorporate this story because I want to ask you, the audience, is this a show I should pick up and check out? If you've watched The Kingdom, let me know what you think of it in the comments right down below. I actually do use those for recommendations quite often. Now let's go ahead and talk about a project that's coming from friend of the channel here, Josh Boone. New Mutants has officially had its release days confirmed, which we knew, but it also has been confirmed that New Mutants has been rated PG-13 for violent content, some disturbing slash bloody images, some strong language, thematic elements, and suggestive material. I'm really looking forward to New Mutants. I've made that clear multiple times. It's an alternative take on the X-Men universe. And while I was never a huge X-Men fan while I read Marvel Comics back in high school, I did like New Mutants. New Mutants always kind of captivated me more than a traditional team. So I'll be checking this out day one as just kind of a result of, you know, it seems kind of darker and I like that. And in rest in peace fantasy adaptation news, The Magicians will apparently be coming to an end after its fifth season. It has been on sci-fi for quite some time, and I know there are fans of this out there, and I'm sorry to hear it come to a close, but five seasons is nothing to shrug at. That is a successful adaptation by a whole lot of standards, and congratulations to the show for having that level of success regardless of how people liked or didn't like it. Now, there has been a flood of news of various conventions and things being canceled due to a certain sickness going around that I can't name because YouTube is apparently demonetizing people for talking about this for some reason. Okay, but yes, that one thing that's in all the headlines is causing these cancellations. So if you've booked a ticket to go to some event, you might want to double check their social medias to make sure that these cons or meetups are still occurring because this is becoming a more real issue to the point where it's in fantasy news because even DC has canceled their appearance at one convention due to concerns over this particular beer-related sounding sickness. I just want to add here that I'm not trying to like stoke people's fear, Practice best sanitation practices, you're most likely going to be fine. I just thought it was remarkable how many things are being canceled right now as a result. Not trying to stoke fear in any way, shape, or form. And in a piece of quickie news, J.J. Abrams and his studio, Bad Robot, which has one of my favorite, like, bad robot things. I like their studio thing. Will apparently be involved in adapting The Pinkerton. Daniel Casey's supernatural thriller, The Pinkerton, is fairly well known and respected, so I'm curious to see what Bad Robot can do bringing this to life. Oh, and it's not just Bad Robot, it's also Warner Bros. They're, they're teaming up. Gotta team up! And in Star Trek news, recently on Twitter, a fan tweeted at William Shatner asking him if he would be willing to reprise his role as Captain Kirk. And the actor responded, No! I think Kirk's story is pretty well played out at this point. And that's interesting to hear from William Shatner. I just didn't think he'd be the kind of person, and I don't mean this in a super negative way, to take those things into consideration when deciding whether to uh, reprise or not reprise a role. But it makes me happy to see, good on you, for having an opinion of, no, this character's done and I feel no need to reprise the role, regardless of the check or project involved. But for the Star Trek fans out there, do you agree? Do you think that Kirk's storyline has been played out and should be put to rest? Or would you like to see a Picard-style revival for Captain Kirk? And in the final bit of fantasy news we're going to cover here today. We have a rather odd story involving a rather odd man, Taka Watiti, partnering with Netflix to bring you not one, 
but two, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory projects. That's right, Taka Watiti is going to be involved in a pair of animated series delving into the universe of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. One, focusing on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory itself, apparently, and the other, the people of the Oompa Loompas. I very much so, for a long time, have been in the camp Leave Charlie and the Chocolate Factory alone. Gene Wilder was perfect, and what's been done to it since has been repulsive. But now that I'm looking at this, Taka Watiti has done no wrong in my mind, at least for the projects he's been involved with. I don't know about his personal life. Don't know why I felt the need to include that information, but I did. <laughs> it's Hollywood. I gotta cover my bases here. But I am really actually okay with this. Taka Watiti's comedy works for me, and I just don't see this not at least being somewhat good. So cool, Netflix. One of the adaptations you announced caught my attention. Anyway, guys, let me know what you thought of these stories in the comments down below. If you'd like to contribute to Fantasy News, all you have to do is join the Discord server, go to the Fantasy News channel and post stories you want to see me covered, and I may or may not cover them. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace.